Hey everybody, I'm going to go through this really quick. So, how many times have you had tracking issues or a break occur in your implementation, your Adobe Analytics? I'm going to go through this very fast, just in case if it doesn't apply to anybody. I want you to find out real quick so you don't have to waste a whole six or seven minutes watching the whole video. Um, but anyways, over to the right here on this graph, you can see the tracking um, broke. This is just an example. Um, so, how would you like to have a Google Sheets automated dashboard that shows you of any anomalies detected using Holt Winter's exponential smoothing which is embedded in the analytics API okay it has an upper and lower bounds it can detect any anomalies based on the tracking 12 week average for all your events evars and props and this is based on hits it's not like tactician that's a great solution I recommend that actually over this but this is actually coming from the analytics health dashboard that you get dispersed from Adobe uh, if you know what this is, great. If you don't, you might want to ask around about it because usually you get this with your implementation is to help you and it's got a little button on it right here for running a macro that pulls the data because it actually has an API connector and you put in your secret and your um, API key, the client's secret key to actually connect to the API and pull the data for like the last 90 days or something like that, okay? And so basically, this is what it's pulling. It's pulling this array right here. It's pulling the summary sheet. When you actually run that dash, um, it actually runs, pulls all the data, and then the anomalies populate right here for each site, okay? What I did was, basically I took that array and I almost like a transpose broke it out into a really long row, okay? It's using links, which you can see it right here. It's just pointing out the location in my um, files um, on my drive to the actual dash and then the actual cell reference. And it's each one of these is each site all the way down. There's 18 of them. Okay. So what it's doing is there are VBA um, scripts, macros in every single Excel spreadsheet that say, hey, I want you to get this audit data, which is the button that you push in those spreadsheets, and then save it, close it, and quit. So it basically just goes through, saves the docs, um, closes them, and goes on to the next doc. And then finally, um, on the final sheet, because I have a summary sheet I'm going to show you in a second here, it emails it off as an attachment, like in a spreadsheet attachment, and converts into a Google Sheet. But you can see here, here's all the VBS scripts. They're all identical except for that summary one that has the actual mailing it off in Outlook. Um, and then here's all the um, health dashboards and then the summary sheet, okay? And it's using Windows Task Scheduler to glue it all together. And it has a series of triggers that say, hey, run this one, run this VBS script, and then when it's done, go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, all the way to the summary. And the summary mails it off, okay? And then, this is the actual summary sheet um, that I showed you earlier. It's basically all the sites broken out into a row piece, okay? And then um, I did have to do a copy-paste values from one tab to another and another macro, um, but that was just issues with my computer, and I noticed I didn't have to do it on another computer because it actually had more bandwidth and processing power, so wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, but you can see I just have you know the same thing here showing this data right here is basically just one of these rows all the way across and sometimes there's a lot of anomalies detected but if you turn the confidence levels and make it less strict it doesn't actually show so many anomalies like I have it set up because I just want to see when it breaks so this is the fun part it actually emails it off and I have it converted into a Google Sheet okay and then the final step that I have once it converts into a Google Sheet is I have it broken back out into these data blocks so I have each site and conditional formatting in here to show me if any anomalies are detected, spikes, you know, any drops or breaks, more importantly. And you can see here, this one looks a little bit high. It, it jumped up about almost triple what it was normally. And then this one here, it looks like it doubled um, over the same day average. Now, the one thing you'll notice here, it says same day. Uh, you can have this set up for daily or weekly. I actually had one set up to do weekly and daily. So I have two of these docs um, and it runs every day and then every week because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any roll up stuff that could occur on some of the sites, especially that had um, not as much dilution, not as much saturation from so much data. And so I actually have a weekly and a daily one and it's got all 18 sites. It's really cool. Um, so I wanted to share it with you because it uses a combination of VBA, VBS, and then it um, emails off this sheet with Outlook and converts it into a Google Sheet. You can use R or Python as well if you want, um, and you can actually have it 
control the Google Sheets. I'm sure there's some packages out there that can um, select and run the macros. Um, you can use Python with like Excel wings or um, R. There's some packages like write XLS. Um, there's some other um, options too, like using the Google Sheets API package. I think it's called Google Sheets in R. I'm not sure what it's called in um, Python. And I also know that PowerShell has um, like an extension or package of which you can actually run Excel without opening Excel, which is really cool. So there's a lot of different variations and ways you can go with this. I had to set this up on my own and learn how to do VBA on my own. I actually reached out to the, one of the original developers. Um, he didn't think he's out in New Zealand, but he helped me um, set up some of the stuff because he had a lot of the scripts on his website, which I can share that information if you're really eager to figure out how to do this. Um, but I just wanted to show you real quick how I set this up. So you could have um, something that's practical even though it's not the best solution it's better than nothing and it helped me a lot um, because I just had my eyes on way too many things and there was stuff slipping through the cracks and I had to adapt and so um, later on I actually ended up learning how to code with Python and Ruby and um, how to set up Selenium with not just Python and Ruby but also with um, Maven uh, JavaScript and then um, we set up unit testing for every time we have a push to production. And then also we set up functional, um, like simulated testing where it clicks through pages and crawls um, to get more thorough um, health checks. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of um, where I went with this. And this is kind of where I started. And it took me about three weeks um, to do this just in between jobs at work and a lot of research and learning after hours. So anyways. Just wanted to share this and um, I hope this helps other people to see what they can do with it.